close your eyes and watch your breath coming in and going out. Just stay right there. Tell yourself you'll be happy to stay right here with the breath. There's nothing else in the world right now that you have to be interested in. Nowhere else that you have to send your attention. You can settle in right here. And if you settle in right here, then you come to learn how to appreciate that the breath does have a big impact on the way you experience your body. You can sit here in comfort or you can sit here in pain. A lot of it has to do with the way you breathe. So try to sit with a sense of comfort. Breathe in a way that feels good. Learn to make the best use of what you've got. You've got a body sitting here, you've got your mind. The Buddha says that's enough for awakening, it's enough to put an end to suffering. And yet we use these things so often to go in the opposite direction, towards suffering. So we've got to learn how to look at them carefully. Where are their good potentials and make the most of them? And if you focus your attention right here without trying to grab in a lot of other stuff, you find you learned a lot. This relates to a principle the Buddha said. It helps make us be able to rely on ourselves, which is contentment. Now, some people think contentment means simply being lazy and just saying, well, whatever I've got is okay. But actually it's taking what you've got and making the most of it. Not sitting around thinking about how much you'd like to have this over there or that over here. Look at what you've got and make the most of what you've got. That's the principle of contentment. Because otherwise we spend our time dreaming about what we'd like here and what we'd like there. Nothing gets done. As I would have said, having some initiative is an, an admirable trait to have. But the initiative should start with being content with what you've got, saying, I'll grow with what, what I have here. And John Lee gives an image. He says it's like developing a coconut plantation. You get one coconut, and if, if you just eat it, that's the end of it. But if you take it and you plant it, and then it gives rise to more coconut trees, and then you take some of those, eat some of those, and get, plant the rest, they get, grow into other coconut trees. Ultimately, you become a millionaire with a coconut plantation. Where does it come from? It comes from taking, making the most of what you've got. Of course, at the same time, contentment does mean having a sense of enough. You don't have to be a millionaire in order to be happy in life. In fact, if you have a huge plantation, maybe it's a little bit too much. Because after all, you can't take it with you. What can you take with you? You take your mind. And that's an area where the Buddha says you have to be discontent. In other words, as long as the mind is creating suffering, you can't content yourself with what it's doing. You've got to look into it to see what it's doing that's creating trouble. And even as you develop more and more skillful qualities, you can't rest content with them. If you can develop the precepts, you can't be content with just the precepts. You have to move on to meditation. Get the mind into concentration. You can't be content just with the concentration. You've got to move on to discernment. This is an area where the Buddha says, try to be discontent. And that's, he said, was the secret to his awakening, that he didn't rest content with what he had inside the mind. He was content with things outside. As long as it was good enough to practice, it was good enough. But that didn't mean that he didn't improve things outside. He did improve them, but he had a sense of enough, how far to go, and when to start turning more and more attention to his mind. In other words, you want enough to live comfortably, but not so much that your possessions become a burden, or that the work you need to do doesn't give you any time to take time for the mind. To have a sense of just right with this principle of contentment, and you learn how to rely on yourself. You become a refuge to yourself. You look around, what can you depend on outside? So many things outside depend on things that are very fragile. The economy is fragile. Society is fragile. The climate is fragile. Things change very easily. So you have to look inside for what you're going to depend on. So make sure that you give yourself enough time to focus on what's going on inside your mind. Because that's where your true refuge will lie. 